As Canadians, we celebrate Confederation as the birth of our country, but it wouldn't have been possible without first making our country democratic. The road to democracy wasn't easy. Rioters were killed, and some protesters even burned down Parliament. Journalist and politician William Lyon Mackenzie was one of the key rioters. In 1837, he led a revolt against the Family Compact. The Family Compact was a group of powerful men who virtually controlled Upper Canada and bypassed its elected assembly. On December 6th of that year, Mackenzie and a group of reformers paraded through the streets of Toronto, destroying property and businesses. But his protest wasn't enough to spark reform. In Lower Canada, there was a similar uprising to oppose a controlling group known as the Chateau Clique. However, the rebellion there was a lot more violent. Louis-Joseph Papineau was a prominent rebel who eventually fled to the United States. Hundreds of rebels were arrested, and seven were exiled. Twelve rebels were hanged for their part in the rebellion. In 1838, Lord Durham accepted the position of Governor General of Canada. He was tasked with investigating and reporting on the rebellions. In 1839, he submitted his report, known today as the Durham Report. Durham is considered the father of responsible government in Canada because he recommended giving more power to elected representatives. He also proposed making the two provinces into one. By 1840, the province of Canada was established and split into two regions, Canada East in what is today Quebec, and Canada West in today's Ontario. Responsible government was slower to arrive. Nova Scotia was the first to achieve responsible government in 1848. Later that year, in the province of Canada, reform leader Robert Baldwin and his ally Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine won elections in Canada East and West. Lafontaine became Premier, while Baldwin became Deputy Premier. At the opening of Parliament in 1849, Francophones scored a significant victory when Governor General Lord Elgin read the speech from the throne in both French and English. This made French an official language of Parliament. Lafontaine also succeeded in passing the controversial Rebellion Losses Bill, the bill compensated people in Lower Canada whose property was damaged during the rebellions. Montreal's Anglophone business class was furious. They saw the bill as rewarding French-speaking rebels. Governor Elgin personally opposed the bill. Under the previous system, he could have vetoed it. But because it was passed by elected officials under a responsible government, he had to approve it. Elgin arrived at Parliament late in the afternoon of April 25, 1849, to give the bill royal assent. A few hours later, an irate crowd from Montreal's English community marched on Parliament with torches in hand. They smashed the windows, entered the Assembly, which was still in session, and set the building on fire. More than 23,000 volumes in Parliament's two libraries and archives went up in smoke. The rioting did not end there. In the days that followed, vandals attacked the homes of La Fontaine and other government members. Rioters also threw rocks at Lord Elgin and his guards. Sporadic attacks continued into the summer. It was a tumultuous start to responsible government, but once it got rolling, other jurisdictions followed. Prince Edward Island in 1851, New Brunswick in 1854, and Newfoundland in 1855. Finally, the foundation had been provided for a fully democratic Canada.